So you want to get strong in the end game and maybe even survive for longer. Well, today we're going to talk about all the best ways to fully upgrade your character in the end game. There are quite a few hidden mechanics that the game doesn't talk about and ways to gain massive boosts in damage and survivability that you might have missed out on. Right off the bat, let's get started with how you evaluate an item. Once you get it to drop, the first thing you should look at are of course its affixes. And especially since many of them actually are common within the top tier builds in Diablo 4. Damage against vulnerable enemies, for example, is one of the most common as vulnerability already lets you deal 20% extra damage to enemies affected by it. Most classes actually have a way to apply this fairly easily, so this is the next logical upgrade. Like in the case of my previous trap build for my rogue, I had around 200% additional damage to enemies that I make vulnerable, most of which comes from the two-handed crossbow that I have, but other items can also have it to a lesser extent. Critical strike and critical damage is also really big for most of the builds, mainly because you can crit more often and also crit for higher values if you have both of these as a high value. Crits by default deal around 100% bonus damage, but if you have high critical damage, you can far exceed that. Others that work really great too are all the additive non-conditional buffs, such as the ones to core skill damage, close or long range damage, it just depends on your build, like for example in the case of the rogue, both core skill damage in case we're going with the penetrating shot or the twisting blades, as well as the close range damage help a ton here too, since we're constantly in the enemy's face. Another thing that's not too obvious is the attack power that you see under the main stat, and generally speaking you will want to pay attention to it, but don't think it's going to paint the full picture of how strong your build is. Like you can have a very high attack power build, but really be lacking on the crits or bonus damage, so it's going to end up being significantly weaker than, say, a build that has 20 or even 30% lower attack power, but goes with 100 or 200% more damage to vulnerable enemies or crowd controlled enemies, or just has massive critical damage. So if you read the attack power tooltip, it says that it's based on your offensive stats, scaled with your wielded weapon damage as well as the speed. But the offensive stats are all the ones we just talked about, like the critical chance, damage to vulnerable, to close range enemies, and pretty much this entire list right here. So it literally factors them all in without taking into account which benefit your build the most. So if your build doesn't do for example any form of crowd control but you have a lot of bonus damage to crowd controlled enemies, your attack power might look really high but in reality your build will suffer because you simply don't benefit from it. This is also going to bring us to the actual stat caps, also known as stat breakpoints as I'm sure you heard of them by now. Long story short, there are about 6 breakpoint tiers in Diablo 4 that each bring additional stats and even skill points to the next tier, giving you a larger boost than normal upgrades. I'm sure you noticed as you leveled up that your items dropped with increasingly more bonuses or higher values of them. So the two final breakpoints are going to be high level 625 and 725. This means that once you find or upgrade an item past these thresholds, the max amount of the affixes or the stats on them will also jump into the next tier. So here's an example with an eye level 700 ring, which is technically just below the final breakpoint that comes at 725. If you look at the crit damage, for example, its stat range goes only from 14 to 21%, while the item is still under 724 eye level. However, once I push this over 725, the new range now goes from 21% to 31%, so basically it's almost like getting doubled. So this is how it looks like to jump into the next tier and it literally applies to any other effects. What this means for you is that you should not discard items just because they are of a low eye level compared to your current gear. For example, discarding an eye level 710 just because you now moved on to 780 plus in reality is or can be a really bad move as that 710 can be upgraded like 3 more times and might even get much better stat rolls once it reaches the breakpoint. This doesn't work on 810 plus item level by the way because there is no threshold over there to exceed, maybe at least not until season 1 or once we get a new tier above it. 
Moving on to number four, the next method to buff up your power, as you can see, is to exceed the skill points on the skill that you use the most with your current build. Like, for example, in my case, as you can see, I have the penetrating shot and I have nine total points invested in it. That's because the four extra points are given by my actual gear, which can indeed roll with additional skill points on top. So I've seen this actually popping off on most gear pieces, with the most common being the head, but I also found them on gloves, on the amulets, and a few others as well. And basically what they do, they will continue to buff up that entire skill, both in terms of damage and any other secondary effect that it might have. In this case, it can be quite significant, like for example, getting a 30% additional damage buff just because you have those additional skills, which is actually insane because this is going to then benefit from all other damage buffs you get from the other affixes. And the thing is, it can go all the way up to 20 plus, which I believe is around where the max number of extra skill points can be on any single given ability. Moving on to number 5, here's a tip to avoid one of the most costly mistakes you can do in Diablo 4 when upgrading your gear, and that is to always enchant your gear or reroll its affixes before you make that item legendary. Otherwise, you're just skyrocketing the price over there to insane levels and will never be able to fully afford it. So instead, do all of that while the item is still rare quality and always change the affix that is the least most important for you. So if you go with an item that is pretty decent but has a couple of really bad affixes, change the one that is the worst for you. In this case, you might have a chance to reroll it for something that can be really great, maybe some crit damage, vulnerable damage or extra skill points. However, keep in mind that once you picked one of these slots and changed the stats on them, you're going to be stuck to only being able to change that specific slot from this point on. So if I, for example, were to go ahead and reroll on this damage over time, which is on the first slot, if I commit to it, from this point on, I can only modify the first one. Plus, every time I do another reroll on the same item, the cost in terms of gold and resources will continue to increase. But let's say you now need a cool legendary power that might be build defining, though you cannot find it. Well, there are a couple of things that you can do, especially as you progress in the game to make things a lot easier. First of all, always, and I mean always, keep the legendaries still as the items on the items that they came with in your stash. I took the advice that some of you gave me and I made a whole stash dedicated just to items that dropped with aspects that I might need later on, either for my melee, my range build, or anything else that I might find appropriate. This is because the ones in your bags are very limited, and in this way, you can keep a lot more aspects rather than having to discard them every now and then. Second of all, look at the type of aspect that you're going to hunt for and what types of slots they can go on, because this can indicate where you can find them. For example, let's say you want to go for an offensive piece, which is something that can be added to amulets, to weapons, gloves, as well as rings. So what this means is that if you need that specific, in this case, offensive aspect, you can find it on these types of items. So what you can do once you have this information is to go at the Obol vendor or when you go and complete the Tree of Whispers or when you do any other activity to focus on these specific items because they might have a chance to give you that specific imbuement. But let's say you got the item with a good affix, you got the legendary power, you also imprinted that, it's time to do the upgrades. This is one of the next biggest contributors to your damage and even defensive output because it literally upgrades all the stats on them, including the main as well as the affixes. Even though it's only within like 1-2% to 2 range when you factor in the fact that each item has up to 5 upgrades, plus all the other gear pieces that you're gonna be upgrading at the same time you're looking at at least doubling your damage, if not quadrupling it, maybe even more depending on how you build your character and what stats you have. Even more so if you take into account those breakpoints we just talked about and are just within like 3 upgrades or 15 eye levels away from the next breakpoint tier. In this case, not only are those 3 starting upgrades super cheap, but you might also get a really big boost in all the powers that that item holds 
At number 8, the next thing you're going to want to focus on right after this are the gems and the slots you put them in, because depending on the slots, they will give you different bonuses. So currently, here are some of the best setups that I follow. For weapons, the Emerald is one of the best because it gives you an excellent boost to crit damage against vulnerable enemies. But if you don't apply vulnerability too much and instead maybe use something like crowd control mechanics, you can totally go with the Sapphire, which is going to be built more focused toward crowd controlling damage. For jewelry, the top choice at the moment are the skulls because they give you extra armor and that helps a ton with physical as well as non-physical damage reduction, especially when pushing nightmare dungeons. Trust me, just going with rough HP is not going to be enough, you do want to reduce the incoming damage too. Now for armor, the top pick for me up until this point was the topaz for the damage reduction while crowd controlled. But I recently made the switch to rubies despite my previous statement about HP. The reason is because I think that I have enough armor as it is, but my HP levels were actually super low, so I tried buffing that a little bit and it definitely helps me to push Nightmare Dungeons even more, especially if you already have the damage but not the survivability. This can help if you go with a more balanced route. And this brings us to the final upgrade which is going to truly push your build over the edge and that is to take a look at all of these glyphs and pay attention to the extra bonuses that they give especially once you upgrade them by completing Nightmare Dungeons and once they also unlock additional radius. Like in the case of the closer glyph for my rogue, this only provided a marginal damage to my Twisting Blade skill early on and I was mostly using it for the damage reduction. But at level 13, it gives me a whole 45% additional damage to all my cutthroat skills for every plus 5 dexterity node I get in its range. And that is because it actually starts benefiting a lot more from these additional nodes as I upgrade that. Plus the nodes themselves will also further benefit from this, kind of like in a self-feeding loop. So you do have to actually have those unlocked within the radius for it to count, otherwise it won't. Meanwhile, the rare nodes, which are these yellow ones, these do not have a radius check, but instead will factor in all the nodes and all the extra stats that count towards their bonus buffs. So this includes even the ones from the other Paragon boards as they count to your total max for all of these yellows that you have unlocked. It's important to eventually meet that requirement because that's going to further double whatever effect is on it, be it damage, defenses or anything else. But it doesn't stop there as you can add another 60% bonus on top of it if you manage to extend the range on the glyph near it so it can also encompass that rare node. Once you get both the double and the 60% bonus, you're looking at a massive buff to that effect, be it whatever it is, but it's going to be a significantly higher one than not doing it. And yeah, that's pretty much it with all the methods. Let me know down below if there's anything I missed. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.